Well, I want to start with you first. One of the benefits of television as a medium is the opportunity to grow with a character for an extended period of time. As you've headed into season two, was there a particular aspect of Cat that you were most excited to delve deeper into? Uh, the 1800s, for sure. For that to become a whole new experience and a whole new journey for her, we really worked very hard to create this entirely different world. And I mean, that that goes across the board, even the lighting is different, the way that, you know, our, our DPs worked on the show, they really differentiated each era that we were in, mm -hmm. um, even from set to set. Uh, it, it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, and, and we were able to take the 1800s and not not make them that like idealistic 1800s when you think of all that beautiful like big puffy dresses and all that stuff we're like no we're homesteaders right and so it's dirty it's gross yeah. I had to run through a potato field which I look like a goober and you will see that when you watch the show Taters. still embarrassed about that but um yeah, you, you see the origins of the families of the Augustines and also the Landry's. And so I'm so excited for everybody to learn about it exactly the way that Kat did, which was incredible, um, beautiful, heartwarming, and then guttural in a lot of ways. Yeah. I've got to see the first four episodes of season two. It's absolutely fantastic. You know, oh, awesome. There's... There's this beautiful moment in episode 110 where Elliot is telling Kat about the fact that he's been a spectator in his own life for so long and now has the opportunity to write the next chapter in his life. And there's so much subtlety and hope that you bring to that moment. And we also find worlds colliding with your rendition of Time After Time, playing that scene off. As an actor, how did you create the space for yourself to dive into that moment? What was your reaction when you read that scene in particular? And how did this music element also get incorporated? Oh man! Well, I, every once in a while, when you're doing a show that's a show that's continuing, you don't know the scripts before they come along, and so it's a it's like a gift that comes along. And especially by the end of the season, we as the actors are all invested in it too. So by the time we got to episode ten, like there are consistently tears yeah. in our read throughs. Like that's just yeah. sort of that's just the way. But episode ten was was uh, it, it was really impactful. I think. Uh, we've said before during press that when we shot that that scene in episode 10 we both kind of like had to take an extended period afterwards just to sort of cry cry and like kind of hold each other a little bit yeah. because like as an actor you're having the opportunity to pattern your own personal truth and co-mingle it with the character and so any opportunity to try to bring some of your own past into it and those moments where it's sort of like a touch point um, it was very immediately apparent to me how I was going to tell my truth in there. And mm -hmm. I feel like we had the opportunity to do that. And it was just the cherry on top that they that they chose to use time after time. I had kind of recorded that of my own volition during the year because I thought, you time travel show, oh, this would be nice. And I've always loved that show. And so I pitched, I recorded it and I pitched it to the production. And to mm -hmm. their credit, they recognized that that might be the perfect point for it. So uh, with my music project, Bright World, which has, I, you know, I've, I've been doing music for years with this, yeah. pro with this project, um, getting to incorporating that with the show that we already love so much was just so rewarding as an artist to be able to kind of have lateral avenues of, of creation and expression and knowing that we're part of a production that's paying attention as well mm -hmm. and is like similarly invested in mm -hmm. trying to find all the avenues to try to tell an impactful story. And that is one of the, I, th I think, the hallmarks of this production. Uh, I can't help myself. I can't help. Okay, and uh, and, uh, and that definitely continues in season two. And this, this season is so rewarding. Uh, I can't wait for audiences to see it. That's a great product and a stunning rendition. And, you know, Kyler, what I love about this series is it focuses on these three strong, powerful women who are uplifting each other. We see that more so in season two. Who are the women in your own life who have shaped the storyteller that you are today? Did you channel any of them into, the, into your performance in the series? It's a good question. Mm -hmm. That would be a very long-winded answer, which I will not, I, I will abbreviate. Um, actually, my mother-in-law. Um, I know that not many people get to say that in their lives, um, that they really genuinely love their mother-in-laws, but she is a phenomenal woman who has gone through a tremendous amount of hardship and really grew to be this 
wonderful, strong, brilliant woman who just loves her family and, and is just ferocious about everybody's well-being. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I could draw a lot from that. I mean, I basically grew up with her. And so she's just a wonderful person. And, and on the other side of that, my daughters, because mm-hmm. everything that I do, I do it very intentionally. Because if I'm going to spend time away from my family, I need to know that it's worth it. Mm. And as I'm getting older and, and my daughters are getting older, they're watching what I'm doing now, yeah. you know, on, on and off screen. And they love this show so, 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 so much. And so I'm, I get this incredible opportunity to show those dynamics, the relationships, you know, from Kat, it's like she's daughter and mother. Mm. And yeah. so, you know, I, I'm, able to through this show teach them so many things but now because cat is learning so much through alice it helps me take a step back and learn yeah. from my daughters so mm. it, it's it's really interesting it kind of all comes full circle um so i'm i'm grateful to be able to be on on both sides of it life imitating her and you know exactly. and this this is such an emotional watch from start to finish, like you were saying, but there's also moments of levity, which you and your character often bring to the series. How fun is it for you to get to play in both of these worlds and how much of that is scripted versus improvised? Oh man, that, that, <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I took this role. Like that's it really attracted to me in, in the first place. Uh, I love to play a character who falls. And especially when we're walking around in our lives, there are. <laughs> there, Do you mean literally? No, no. I, I, I mean, I mean, sometimes, <laughs> I literally. sometimes literally, but no, but, but, but like we walk around in our lives, like hell bent on trying to make sure that people perceive us as competent and strong, and you know that's what's acceptable to, to society. So I think that when we play characters, we can we can play characters that show their weakness and they fall, and I I love to to play the layers of like trying to make sure that the audience that, that that who I'm with doesn't see that I'm falling but actually I'm falling apart inside mm. or the mm. or the, the the vice versa because there's and that's where the comedy comes from I think is like people yeah. saying one thing and doing another thing and so any opportunity your uh, moments with with um Sadie when it's ever it's, oh, it's Elliot and <laughs> Alice and she yeah. has a comment that comes across so inappropriate his turn every single time that swivel my daughters actually made me rewind it so that they could watch him do that initial swivel when you were in the classroom together yeah, <laughs> she yeah, said, let's yeah. talk about last night yeah. <laughs> and I know I know it's brilliant. that it's, 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 brilliant. A, it's yeah. a show that has definitely very emotional moments so I think that the counterbalance of the comedy is definitely nef- necessary because yeah. people have to breathe yeah and so yeah. and but I will say there is a lot of improvisation uh from all of the characters just because there's little kind of human moments we never know how much of that stuff is going to make it into the show um I usually a very small amount because mm-hmm. the show actually like they end up having to cut to try to make the, the show the time you know what mm-hmm. I mean like so like they're they're trying to pack in so much into these shows especially even season two this the, the show is widening and expanding we're moving yeah. into different time periods and there's more characters so because of that we there, there's a certain um monicum of what, what like a they just got to get on with it and so yeah. it has to be a super good ad lib or a super good improvisation for it to make it in but anytime it does it's like mm, mm. Little, I said like a fluff I have to get that because it's driving me crazy. That's an exclusive. <laughs> Improv. <laughs> <I>, hey! <laughs> what a moment. Final question for the both of you, but you know, what's so unique and refreshing about this series is those distinct timelines like you were just talking about where your characters live and then you have two young actors playing the teenage versions of your characters. What is it like collaborating with them and how are their decisions in the past influenced and impacted your decisions in present day? Mm. Mm. You have such a great story, your, your story with David. Mm-hmm. I, you should absolutely speak to that first. David Webster is such a talented actor who plays young Elliot. And it's really cool since we have now have, in aggregate, over two seasons, we have 20 episodes where we can be watching each other's work. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so it kind of is happening organically because he's also clever. And he's watching what I'm doing and mm-hmm. starting to like just put little breadcrumbs little clues into his performance and I'm watching what he's doing and so in a way we're sort of like like a DNA strand we're kind of circling each other as it's continuing to progress 
into a greater understanding for the audience. So it's really, really cool. And we, we see each other on set a lot. And so we have just little sidebars and little side combos. And we're also peppering in stuff that's not even in the script. We're trying to, trying to just add little, you know, little mannerisms and things that mm -hmm. are little human moments that will be rewarding for the audience. It's I, I love how you guys have like even the glasses moments and like those those yeah. the little subtleties they're yeah. so they're so powerful um, for for myself with with Alex Hook she's so such a stunning actress I mean literally and figuratively she mm. she really is she's a lovely girl um, and you know in the beginning it's it's kind of interesting because I think about it with you and, and David your character has been stuck in this same kind of place this entire time mm -hmm. and so when you did talk about it there was such a, a, a through line of keeping those things very um, precious yeah. for Kat being the younger version to where Kat is now it's like night and day changes yeah. and so so that being the case um alex and i didn't really have like these big conversations beforehand because it's almost like we knew where cat was going to be in the present so alex was able to kind of make some really great choices and just have fun with her being that happier side that we see because it's pre you know um yeah. jacob going missing and pre daddy you know nine but um so when we pick up with Kat later, the one thing that we had very um, distinct conversations about was Kat having panic attacks, which is something from from a you know mental health standpoint. I'm so glad that we got to cover that. I have them in my own life, so I mm -hmm. know very well yeah. what they are. And so um, I actually was able to talk to her about what mine looked like. And so, um, cause she has that happen in 2000, we see her very first or Kat's very first panic attack. And so I just wanted that authenticity to be there. And she was so amazing. She did her own research. She's like, I have like all these, you know, the nuts and bolts of it, but what did it look like for you? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we were able to have that conversation and she just nailed it. Mm -hmm. And so to see that as the teenage version, but still see that adult cat deals with it as well it's like it's okay that it's a journey and this might be something that sticks with you for a really long time and that's okay you know right. so it's just a matter of how we deal with it so you watch that progression and she just did such a fantastic job with it mannerisms as well like I, i'm really really proud of her for that and a storyline yeah. like that with with that much emotional honesty and nuance like a, a storyline like that on hallmark like yeah. it's it's a that's revolutionary I think that's why audiences have loved it so much.